everyone, and thanks for joining us here at Cloud Wars Live, where we explore today's digital business revolution by speaking with executives and thought leaders who are changing how the world lives, works, plays, learns, and dreams. Our guest today is Mark Kermish, who's CIO and VP of Innovation at Red Wing Shoes, a remarkable company that's been around for more than a century, started off manufacturing boots and now still makes thousands of pairs of boots and shoes every day, but also as a national retailer. So, Mark, welcome to Cloud Wars Live, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Bob. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. So, you know, Mark, I, I just think, you know, Red Wing Shoes is another one of those just uh, incredible American success stories, 100 years in business, lots of changes, especially over the last handful of years. Could you just take us through where the company's been, you know, where you are today, and where you're headed. Sure. You know, when I think about Red Wing Shoe Company, you hear the term unicorn often in, in the context of the startup world, right? These billion dollar enterprises. I think in some cases, you know, century old companies are also unicorns. Yeah. Uh, if you think back, you know, the average company on, on the S&P 500 is only at about a 50 year lifespan. And we've at least doubled that. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot's changed. You know, we started out as a, a traditional manufacturer of work boots. Um, we own our own tannery. We own our own manufacturing facilities here in Red Wing, Minnesota. Uh, we also have facilities in Potosi, Missouri. Um, and, you know, we started actually going international in the 60s, uh, which really opened up our world to what the uh, the opportunities were. We Our very first country we went into business with was actually Libya, um, as oil fields in Libya started to open up. Um, and then actually in the late 60s, we opened up our very first Red Wing shoe store in Salt Lake City. Uh, which was a new way for us to to get to market. And it was really spawned off of um, our customers driving us to where they wanted us to be. And uh, since then, since the, you know, the late 60s, we're now at 550 retail stores uh, in the United States. We've got about another 40 stores across Europe and Asia. And uh, they're a mix of work-based stores where you're mainly selling work boots uh, and other safety equipment. And then there's a handful that are just focused on our fashion business, which are kind of our iconic heritage style USA made products. Um, but I'd say that, you know, the number one difference between where we were 50 years ago or even 10 years ago is if there's a way to get a, a product to market with a consumer, we do it. We're a wholesaler, we're a direct to customer through e-commerce, we're through retail. We have mobile trucks that we drive product out to work sites to sell off the back of. Uh, and, uh, and we do pop-up shops now and again. So um, if there's a way to go to market, we're pretty much there these days. Yeah, Mark, and I really liked, uh, you know, how you put that a second ago, that uh, the customers are driving you to be where the customers want you to be. That's, a, yeah, absolutely right, right? And I think we've seen it uh, play out through retail distinctly in the last decade where the consumers are now in the driver's seat, right? Ten years ago, it was merchants that were driving that. And you'd go out in these trend shows and they'd bring product to market to tell you what you wanted to wear, now the consumer can say, no, this is what I want to wear. And this is how I want to buy it, where I want to buy it. And that's probably, you know, at the tip of the spear for us, it's, it's going digital. And being an old school company with 115 years of history, um, where guys would show up at a customer site with a bag of boots and say, look in my bag. This is where I got this spring. Uh-huh. Bringing that consumer perspective in has, has been a change curve for us. Um, but over the last four to five years, we've got a, a fabulous chief marketing officer named Dave Schneider who really has brought that outside end perspective. And we've, you know, reprofiled and created new customer journeys and started to understand that we serve everybody from your grandfather all the way down to your grandchild and trying to go across those spans of generations where I've got to engage with the Gen Z that's now coming into the marketplace and yet still be able to provide a hands-on experience for that boomer um, that might be replacing their hunting boots. Mm-hmm. So, Mark, you mentioned that, you know, you, you got a new CMO four or five years ago. You've been at the company a handful of years. Or so what were some of the big challenges that you as CIO and VP of innovation had to confront when you first arrived? Uh, yeah. Um, so I think when I came in, my predecessor, You know, I think he plowed the harder road in that when he joined the company almost 12 years ago, uh, IT was really a closet, right? I mean, we provided servers and desktops and maybe some software. Um, He really started to bring the dialogue of, you know, technology drives your business. 
um, and started to create some vision. And then when I came in, you know, we had some really interesting vision, but all the projects were stuck and they were mm-hmm. stuck because our business wasn't engaged. Uh, our technology team was spread too thin. Um, and we were really focused on doing things the way that had always been done, right? Very waterfall, very linear approach, big requirements documentation. And then, of course, everything had to be Regling's way, right? So we brought, pot, brought bought packages uh, and we said, okay, yeah, Oracle may have 10,000 clients, but they don't do it our way. So let's make Oracle do it our way. Um, and so that was the, the core challenge was, was unsticking those projects. And it was educating our business on how they have to engage with technology, that it's not just to throw it over the wall, but I have to sit next to my technologists and co-create together. And then, you know, and turning internally on the technology team, you know, there was a lot of empowerment that we needed to, to shift. And it was the technologists have a voice. They need to be consumer focused. They need to be user focused. And we need to start to get out from behind our desks and actually co-create um, together with our organization, uh, which was different for our, for our teams. Mark, did you so you've used that term a couple of times of co-creation. I just think that's a. Uh... That's such a powerful concept today, right? And it seems like the best sort of companies that are really getting the digital thing uh, have formed ways not only within their organization to co-create across what used to be internal boundaries, but also outwardly to customers. Are you finding some of that with Red Wing? Absolutely. And, you know, the, um, I'm a big fan of open environments, agile development, you know, user-centric design and, and creation. And, you know, when I started to study these concepts probably 15, 20 years ago, uh, having grown up through the startup community, you know, startups did it because they didn't have enough money um, to uh, to buy furniture, right? They just bought tables and chairs and they sat in the open and the marketing guy and the IT guy and the sales guy just happened to be sitting next to each other, right? Uh, and, yeah, the irony is that all these open, you know, formats and agile development were just natural because of this, you know, bootstrap mentality um, and taking that same approach uh, within a corporate environment has been very successful for us. And by co-creating, you get shared accountability and shared buy-in and, and shared ownership of that outcome. And uh, it allows our, our IT team and technologists to have a better understanding of what it's like to walk in the consumer's shoes. Um, and it also gives some perspective back to our business of, Technology isn't easy, right? Even though we all live in the world of iPhones and apps, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes behind making that a seamless experience. Um, and so we've, we've learned that it leads to better outcomes. So, Mark, just if I could explicitly ask as well, when, when you and I met in New York a couple of weeks ago, one of the big things that you talked about was culture. So it sounds like there's been um, what was already a very good culture at the time, but these modern days and so many of the changes taking place in the marketplace now, sounds like Red Wings had to evolve that even more rapidly and, and farther down the line. You're right. And I think one of the challenges that a central business can, can fall into is as trends come and go, they're like, well, we've seen that before and we survived, uh, but the pace of change is so much faster and the potential of disruption is so much faster that Putting a sense of urgency into our culture was was required. Um, taking an outside in perspective was required. Being in a town of sixteen thousand, you know, my staff can't walk across the street and talk to a Target or a Facebook or whatever. Um, and so it takes more effort for us to learn from our peer companies or get involved in the industry, which is why you see us at places like NRF. Uh, but that didn't exist as a natural muscle, and so a lot of it's been introducing those concepts. And one of the very first things that we did internally in IT is we created, uh, you know, an uh, internal hackathon. Um, but the way we built the hackathon was is only the business could submit ideas. And so it kind of forced a little bit of collaboration. Uh, and the most amazing thing happened is people got in a room together. They learned that they talk the same language, uh, that they have a desire for the same outcome, and they both bled red wing blood, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so at the end of that hackathon, you know, the energy level uh, and the relationships built were more important than the actual technical product that was developed. Um, and we've repeated that now about every quarter, uh, you know, for the last four years. So the, it sounds like there's been a significant change in how the rest of the company perceives the IT organization, Mark. And um, I, I was thinking as you were describing that, it always sort of makes my heart skip a beat or I don't know what, what 
exactly the reaction is, but it's not a good one when sometimes you still hear some CEOs saying, you know, my job is to support the business. Like the IT team sits over here and is separate from the business. And if you, right, if that's the mindset, then you'll be separate from the business rather than being interlaced within it. It's a huge pet peeve of mine. Uh, from my perspective, there's only a handful of leaders in any company that get to see how the whole company operates, your CFO, your head of HR, and your CIO. They have the same purview that the CEO does because we have to engage with the whole organization to meet our goals and objectives. Marketing can worry about marketing and supply chain about supply chain and product about product. And I'm in dialogues all day long where my head of marketing is pushing an e-commerce agenda. And he's like, well, I don't care what supply chain does with inventory as long as it's there. And it's like, yeah, but it's more complicated. And so we've got to go figure that out. And so I view my job really as a business leader, a broad corporate hat wearing business leader. And my tool chest is just full of technologists. You know, no different than the CMO's tool chest is full of marketers. Uh, but because of that purview where I get to see everybody's skeletons in their closet and their successes as well, um, it puts the CIO in a unique position, I think, to drive transformation. I think that's why you often see them, you know, more and more inside of digital transformation initiatives and companies. I also think it's why you see, you know, see good CIOs having to arm wrestle their way because marketing wants to drive it or product wants to drive it or merchandising and retail. And I think Target's an interesting story if you watch how that CIO and, and Mike McNamara has really driven the organization where you know, he started out owning technology, and then he took over owning e-commerce, and now he's now owning analytics uh, end-to-end. Um, and I think he's starting to show really what a modernized you know, technology executive is. Uh, and in some cases, you know, the term CIO or CTO or CDO, they all kind of get merged. And if you don't come to the table with that business first approach, you know, the, the legacy infrastructure driven CIO just won't exist. And now a quick break to hear from our sponsor. SAP Experience Management is helping businesses connect to their customers and then connect customers back to those businesses. Just listening to your customers is not enough. Businesses need to respond, react, and relate to them as individuals. Each one of them has his or her own likes, dislikes, and preferences. By combining experience data with operational data, SAP can help your business turn customer insights into actions that make their experiences better. SAP Experience Management helps you turn customers into fanatics and products into obsessions. Learn more at sap.com slash xm. The best on SAP. Now back to the show. Well, Mark, the thing about you know how uh, terms and words can be limiting, I know your company's name, Red Wing Shoes, I just want to share with our viewers, Red Wing makes more than just shoes and boots. <laughs> you got I, it. I got to go rebuild the foundation of the house after you and I are done here, Mark. So <laughs> I'm ready now with these gloves. Well, I, I love it. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, going back to listening to the consumer, right, we've entered into adjacent markets because our consumers have asked, right? And um, Red Wing's known for the longevity of its boots. It's good and bad. Like we literally have... A gentleman that lived in southern Minnesota who was over 80 years old who walked in with his same pair of boots he bought when he was 14. <laughs> and yes, they'd been resold, but they were still kicking. Um, you know, the challenge is that back then that pair of boots was probably 50 bucks, right? Uh, maybe 25. Um, but, you know, our consumer said, hey, you guys make great boots. I really need gloves. Or I really need a safety helmet. Um, and the you know, natural you know, adjacencies were socks, footbeds. Uh, that moved into gloves uh, and then kind of headgear and, and glasses. And then it also moved into uh, head-to-toe safety garments, mainly for oil and gas. Uh-huh. And so these are your bright orange, blue, red, I call them onesies, safety onesies, yeah. so to speak. Um, but they're insulate, they're fire retardant, et cetera. And so we've had to you know, learn how you uh, move into those adjacencies. But because they've always been consumer-led or customer-led as we work with our uh, industrial uh, customers, it's allowed us to go into those marketplaces um, with good product first, right? Because they're, they're seeking us out versus us seeking them out. And you had established a sense of trust, right, among your consumers. So they knew if this is coming from Red Wing, even though it's different from what I've used them for before, this is something I can believe in. Yeah. And I think that trust word is important because I think in retail today, 
uh, and with that, you know, the power shifting the consumer, being able to trust your brand that you want to shop at is important. And branding is that's spent a hundred years building the brand. And I think that's given us permission to play in, in sectors that if we were a new brand today, you wouldn't necessarily be able to play in. Um, or you certainly wouldn't be able to get the loyalty of that customer um, that you've had. And uh, it allows us to, to manage that customer better. But it also you know, per, permeates our whole philosophy where we have a very hands-on, high-touch service approach to how we engage with our customers and consumers. And in some cases, it's, you know, we still take care of that customer or consumer right the first time is our goal. Um, and the ideal experience is you come into the store and you're sat in a chair and your foot is measured uh, and we put you in the right boot with the right uh, product surrounding it. And, you know, just that that experience of having somebody, you know, help you out of your shoes and place your foot in a measuring device and fit you, it's an intimate experience. It's hard to replicate online and we're working hard to figure out ways to do that. Um, but when we think about the experiences where a lot of retailers are going, we kind of already had it in our DNA. And now it's how do you enhance that? Yeah. Mark, uh, we were introduced by someone from Microsoft. So can you tell us a little bit about the role that Microsoft's been playing in uh, the ongoing evolution at Red Wing Shoes? Sure. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is uh, for any mid-market CIO is you're always understaffed, right? Mm-hmm. And I can't out innovate a Target, a Walmart, an Amazon, a 3M, a Granger, et cetera. Uh, so I have to rely on partners. And Microsoft's been a huge partner for us in a variety of ways. Um, obviously, their Office 365 has come a long way from just the basics of Word and Excel. Uh, and it drives our, our employee productivity, collaboration, uh, allows us to have flexible work environments and flexible work schedules. But on the flip side, on the back office side, they've really helped us around cloud computing, uh, advanced analytics, um, deep reporting, and now they're pushing us into artificial intelligence and some machine learning. Um, and you know, being able to go to a single partner who has a vast network um, and has built a business where they can you know scale up to your large Fortune five or Fortune tens, but then scale down to that mid market, and you feel like you get the same treatment. When there's a lot of other vendors where if you're not in the Fortune 500, they really struggle to support you beyond the transaction. Yeah, Mark, that sounds like a compelling uh, agenda. Some of those things you kicked out there, the AI, machine learning, deeper into analytics and so forth like that. So what's next for you and your team? Yeah, there's a couple things um, that, that are next for us. So one is we're highly focused around collaboration because we do have a dispersed workforce. We've got 2,300 employees you know, 50% of them are in the field, either working in retail or out in the sales field, you know, 10 to 15% are international based. And then the rest are kind of spread along corporate um, entities and collaboration uh, has become so critical from the sales process to the service process to the consumer experience. So using Microsoft teams is what we've anchored towards to really help us with that. And that platform is enabling us to not only provide instant messaging capabilities, access to corporate documents, but also to publish information like you know, yesterday's sales or daily sales reports, inventory positions, executive dashboards. Um, and what's great about it is, you know, Microsoft tests that in their own retail environment first. And so, you know, as you probably saw it in our app, they're starting to push even frontline worker capabilities like shift management, shift swapping. Mm-hmm. Um, and some light workflow, which again, you know, now I don't have to go develop that. I can just take advantage of it. Uh, on the machine learning and AI side, you know, we've really kind of got three things that we focus on enhanced consumer experiences. So can I have a consumer take a picture of a boot and be able to know what year that boot was manufactured, what color the leather was, and then be able to say, here's the, the shoe cream you should purchase or they take a picture of their outsole and we can tell them, hey, that outsole is worn out. Here's the cost and the process to start getting that boot resold. Um, the second area is around quality, and that's mainly within our manufacturing facilities. Um, and so using you know vision capabilities in combination with machine learning and artificial intelligence is, can I detect quality issues as I'm manufacturing a product and be able to catch that product early enough that it reduces my cost to fix the defect? Or in the case of our leather, can I help determine the quality of the leather before I put it through the cost of finished tanning? 
And then from there, be able to create better sorts of that leather quality so I can put the highest grades into my running footwear and potentially find other uses for those lower grades. And it's a pretty interesting concept because leather's like our skin, right? It has bug bites and scratch marks. And, you know, their version of tattoos is a brand from the cattle rancher. Um, but all of those things have to be factored in because when you put a boot on, on your foot, you don't want those things visible necessarily. Um, and so there's a, well, there's a lot that I've learned in my short tenure here that goes into tanning leather. And then the last is around productivity, right? It's, it's back office productivity, front office productivity, um, as well as within our manufacturing. So how can I use that technology to shorten cycle times, to automate work, to provide better information for decision making? Um, and again, I don't have the depth of talent or the money to acquire that talent to build those capabilities on our own. And Microsoft gives us a framework to, to take that to the next level. Well, Mark, sounds like an exciting agenda coming up. And uh, thank you so much for making uh, the time to share some of the story about what Red Wing Shoes is doing and where you folks are headed. Absolutely, Bob. It's been a pleasure. Well, again, Mark, thanks so much. And thanks to all of you for listening. And uh, please come join us again here at Cloud Wars Live, where we talk about the wild things going on in this uh, rapidly changing digital world of ours and how it's changing every facet of our lives. Please share your feedback with me at bobevanspa at gmail.com. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.